escape this dismal future. It is through the creation of a religious system that one might be spared when the Day of Atonement arrives, thus the birth of hypercubism. Hit it. Man, I'm so excited to be a time uh, part of time for the show tonight on the new and improved time for the show. Now with hypercubism. That's right, kids, hypercubism. You just, as I have, seen one of the great new commercials for hypercubism expounding upon our YouTube ministry to get the word out to everyone so we can increase the pylon density throughout this three-dimensional plane that we live in. And here's my favorite part of the show, when we ask Dr. Fox, how's he doing? And say hello. Hi, Peas. It's great to be. Where are we? I don't know where we are. What are we doing? Well, we're... We're in the former capital of the Spanish Empire, Orlando, Florida, where we live in a 27-story compound that is strangely disguised as a quaint bungalow in a residential neighborhood. But the depths of hypercube compound know no bounds, and as we speak, more pylons and floors are being dug into the crevice we call the Earth so that we can continue to bring you this broadcast excellence that we call time for the show. Ta -da! <laughs> awesome job, Peas. All right, well, it's, it's time for my favorite part of the show, Cube News. Oh, boy. Tell us all about uh, what, what are the big headlines tonight, Peas. Wait, 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 wait. Before we get any further, That's I think he fair. just forgot a crucial, crucial element oh, to yeah, being a you, host. Yeah, please. You... Tell, tell us, Howard Stern. I, well, I feel you forgot somebody, please. I think you forgot a lot of people to introduce. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't even talk about Aster 6 for like a, mil, a millionth of a nanosecond. Yeah, like you just didn't. A micro just, nanosecond. He just blew, blew right through this one. I mean, so you feel the show's off to a bad start. Well, I'm not saying, saying that, but I feel you are lacking. We do know it's time for the show now. You did. Yeah. We did. We did get to that. That was my favorite part of the show so far. And we know. We told everybody what they were watching. And we know there's a Dr. Fox, but I think that's all we know. Because, well, but, but that's really, if you think about it. Which we don't. Which we don't. Which we don't. Which we don't, Dr. Fox. That's such an excellent point. And, and that's why you're singled out in the show, because you bring that kind of depth and savoir to the show that, you know, Aster 6 was because you promised me I would have the cards, and I don't have any cards, so that I forgot to mention the angelic pre- and post-production work that Aster 6 does. Well, you know, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to, didn't mean to fuck it up. Oh, man. Speaking of, yeah. I uh, can't, uh, can't say that on the now radio. That, it's leading into the Cube News, though. It's a good segue. It's a good segue. I know that much. I have to scoot over here. The little peace box is, is uh, it's over here. Here you are. Uh, uh, uh. Hi, Peas! You seem to... Hi, buddy. How's it going? Oh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's going all right. We're, we're moving. Got the new microphone. Ah, oh, sweet. Yeah, you know, so hopefully that, you know, we did a sound check. Big shout out to Dr. Cosmac. That's number seven right there. On the Cosmax Commandos! And 
that's, uh, yeah, you know, getting that sound check done. And uh, Reverend Flux Frutenberg here uh, on the sticks. Hi there. And uh, Aster Six on the kicks. And uh, Reverend Keith in the uh, micro satellite studio in Las Vegas, Utah. In uh, you know, Nevada County. Bees, what happened? What happened this week with you? You're you're well, hosting. I've been watching. You're hosting the show. You should be asking all the questions. I think you're doing a great job, Fox. By the way, but I know I know Pease is the host. Host away. Yeah, man. Tell them all about it. Tell them about these new negative at night T-shirts, Reverend Pease. That's that's what that's what the kids were excited about. It looks like there's some new negative at night T-shirts. That you know, until I was listening and or watching time for the show i had no idea that it even existed so i much like our listening and viewing audience are seeing these fine works of art for the first time themselves and they are fabulous folks let me give you a radio word picture so you can imagine what they look like if you don't have the miracle of youtube on your computer these are black tees black is a black person's blackness i just wow. don't know what to say yeah, I yeah. just don't know what to say. We, we, we could They're tell. black. We, we could you're tell. not even allowed to wear these shirts. If you're a white person, you can't even buy these shirts. What? I am not even going to touch can, that one. Blackface. They consider it blackface. Who considers it blackface? How do we even get here? They're black people. They sent me a letter. They sent me a letter. <laughs> oh, we just went off the rails right off the first day. Oh, man. We're going to get Which banned. Which leads into my favorite sure. part of the show, uh, which is... So... Pease makes an ass of himself. So, Pease, you... <laughs> when, when, we, when we first started doing time for the show, uh, Pease reached out to... Mr. Lobo from OSI 74 who immediately said yes he would come on to the show and I was like we don't even know what it is that we do each week you know we get together and, but, and we but we're, still and, doing and it. we're still doing it but we're doing something completely different and I reached out to him and he wants to come on the show and do the show with us and go through an episode answering the letters to doing the, the show bit um, so we're we're in the process of booking him for that, but I mean, Peas, you're gonna be excited. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to straighten up, Peas. This is. I wonder if I'm still gonna be on the show. I wonder if I'm still be on the show. I might be. Well, I think fired. we have a remedy for that, right? Yeah. Every time, yeah. Every time you screw up, Peas, not only will we pay an embarrassing sound effect. But uh, we're going to give away a digit of your cell phone number. Ooh, that's I good. Have, I, should, I should apologize, slip, buddy. I, really, I should I should apologize because I was trying to freeform and I was stealing free association and, and that's Are you what blaming him, bro? Oh wait, wait, wait. Is wait, that wait. what you're doing? Uh, I I am I am I am I am. I am I am a little bit, because i got to be honest. Okay. i got to be honest with you. I'm a little bit. Roseanne, about, what did you have for dinner tonight? Did you? I had meatloaf, uh, and I could have blamed the meatloaf. That You know, you said meatloaf was bad, and it turns out it is. is murder. But, uh, uh, Think of all of those innocent loves. A, I'm not trying to make an excuse, but there is actually a, a scientific basis to that yeah. when you do, when you do freeform uh Preformed thought association. Uh, you just spit it out, and that's what I was attempting to do. And it wasn't funny, and it was probably super offensive, and I didn't mean it to be. And so I'd save like to it, apologize. Save, to save it for the apologies. Save it for the apologies. I will. I will. I'm going to try to forget oh, about it until then. And I hope that that I'm allowed to. Well, do I wanted it. to tell everybody. If anybody's got an apology, it's it's me so far. So these negative at night shirts are coming out really well. But the uh, Fergan Friday shirts... They're really, they're really the, nice. They, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with these. These came out really nice. And uh, I'm... I won't be describing them. The... <laughs> Good God. Uh, uh, the Fergan Friday shirts, I, I uh, was not pleased with the quality that was coming out. And... Uh, 
we uh, I have to redo that entire screen. So there is uh, just more more delays on the Burger Friday shirts. This will probably be the last time I do pre-orders on anything. Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll do it because I have the Benskis idea, and if anybody is willing to, you know, it, it helps get the resources down and stuff like that. So. I don't know. I'll think about it again. But the Fergan Friday shirts are being made, but uh, I'm redoing it, and I'm going back to square one to do it. So that should be about another week. But they're they're on their way. They're on their way. And the Negative at Night shirts are uh, obviously they're ready to be print off. So I'm waiting on uh, hearing from Robert Negative on how many he wants to do. It's all about maintaining a quality. This is all done by hand. Uh, so, uh, even if you, if you don't want a t-shirt, this is where it pays to plug the Patreon, patreon.com slash hypercube, because all of those funds are what goes into making these things and creating this. If you hear that sound right now, that's people sending money to, uh, paypal.me slash d-o-k-f-a-u-x. Did you hear that? Did, yeah. Yeah. That was money in the bank. That, that was $80. That, that was $80. That was at least $80? Is that what it said? Yeah. Well, yeah, $40 per person, right? That's how much they donate. That sounds good to me. So, so if you uh, don't donate $40 right now at paypal.me slash D-O-K-F-A-U-X, what are you doing with your life? Yeah, you're not going to, you're not making my phone oh. ring. You're not making my phone ring. That's what you're not good doing. Ring. Good ring. I like it's a good it. ring. You can hear it. That's well, yeah, why the Pinsky's I like it. nuclear beer shirts. Uh, those are the next ones on the list to do, and uh, so we'll, we'll hopefully get onto those. I think it's time uh, for me to turn the show back over to our host, Reverend Pease, uh, and uh, I'd like to introduce our guest for tonight, uh, Jesse Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Pete, your turn. You host. I'm done. I got the new microphone. I'm just going to sit here and stare at this blue light. What's uh, um, Ask your shakes. What's the next segment? Uh, um, I, was it? That was cube news, right? We didn't really do cube news. Well, what, what, do we, what do we normally do after... Uh, after uh, the the highlights, the uh, the headlines, or whatever you uh, want to call them. Well, no, well, that, that was normally about this news. time. Okay. About news oh yeah, cute news. Yeah, yeah, that does right. the cute news. Uh, so now, uh, uh, peas o box, right? Am I right? See, peas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, not you prepared. Could... Yeah, peas. That's it. You That's it. Know. Well, I was not told. We're doing obviously terrible. not for my it's opening easy. montage. You just have to read the cards. Where are your old cards, please? I don't know. Alright, well, I think this is time for... something. Mailbox, please. Open yeah. the mailbox. Yeah, yeah man. Open the mailbox, please. I even have some music for it, too, dude. But I don't have the letters to read. Yeah, you do. Does that. Yeah, well, then introduce the bit. It's time for my favorite part of the show. So awesome. Good part of the show. Where Astro 6 opens up the Pizo box and finds what kind of viewer mail and listener mail you've sent us in the last week for Argus Fox and the Peas to decipher. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. yeah I guess so. So yeah, we've we've got a few. We get a, we get some letters. Some, some general questions for the show. Uh, dear show. This sounds good. Uh, can a person wear house slippers on a bus? Can't. What city? <laughs> what time of day? Which which <laughs> bus? <laughs> good answers. I, I, yeah, I, I have no answers for answer these both. questions. People, they're, they're, well, where's the yes. who wrote the letter? Who wrote the letter? They where are they anonymous from? letters. They they decipher they're, what? They're from the viewers. Oh. In radio land. I'm gonna say. Sure. Is, uh, I'm gonna say. Uh, here's my. Explains it all, Minnesota. <laughs> Fid truly, you can wear your house slippers wherever you like. 
But if but if you're not wearing them in the house, they're not house slippers anymore. They're just slippers. Well, they're bus slippers now. Maybe he's got a whole backpack full of slippers for different, uh, you know, well, events. Well, that's what they do in Japan. Going on the bus slippers. You change your shoes. And do they? Like, yeah, every time you change into a vehicle. That's why Ubers take so long in Japan. It's all the shoe changing. Imagine the smell. Yeah, it's just a lot of maintenance. Wait a minute. You got to take off your street shoes and put on some kind of Uber shoes? Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you, that's been like custom ever since they came up with cars in Japan. Well, shoes. Or shoes. What? Well, that's only been about six years, so I mean, it can't be that entrenched in the culture. I don't get your reference, please. That's a, I was, I was, okay. That's a womp that's, womp right there. Womp, womp, womp. I said, I said there'd be no, I said there, I said there, I said there'd be no racism, and then I was racist. Almost, so. you were almost so, racist. You sound very, uh... That one time oh, well, can try it. was almost racist. Well, how about, how about we move on to the next can letter? Try it. I was proud of it. All right, okay. Next letter. All right. Time, I'm, that is going to have no show. racism in it, for sure. All right, well, if you promise, Peas, as long as you promise. All right, dear show, what's an SPF cream I can wear to protect against phone and computer screen rays? Ooh, ejaculate. Isn't there a... Uh, isn't there a hypercube lotion called cube lotion? Yeah, you can use a hypercube gang stalking repellent. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's super effective, trust me. Shake it on and apply, Jovian apply musk oil. liberally. It's based on it's based on Jovian musk oil. How many more cum jokes are you gonna make, please? <laughs> Jovian, Jovian musk oil is not, you never heard of the, the, the musk no, oil perfume curious, like, called Jovian? Like how many, come on, how many, every kid wore how that. How many shows per year, yeah, and out of, how many references per shows, how many of them are semen? And ejaculate. I, I feel, I feel. That's, that's a scalp, that's a skull, it's a scalpod question. To be honest, we need Scalpod to measure our uh, <laughs> our uh, semen our intake, min, our our semen output, <laughs> our, our semen intake. I, I don't think that's right to ask much. Much Scalpod. <laughs> he he should not have to do that. He's a good boy. He'd do it. I'll ask Scalpod which one of us ejaculates the most. Not not even has to. Just mentions it. Otherwise, we'd, we'd have, it, it would end up like beer pong with all these styrofoam cups everywhere. <laughs> Try this one! I was thinking more about trying to just knock them over with the ping pong ball. Did we have another letter? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, dear show, when is it acceptable to carry a pedestrian on a forklift? Anytime. I guess it depends on your, you know, the, ability to get the, work with. Yeah, the, the level of inebriation of either the operator or the rider. That's that's what it comes down to. It's either I'm drunk enough to drive this forklift and, and carry this guy across the street, or I'm drunk enough to let this guy drive me on a forklift. I mean, both are... It, it seems like a good time. It's one or the other, though. You know, one, here's the thing, though. Forklifts are surprisingly person, complicated to operate. One person should be able to, you know, discern a little bit of, you know, consent to. Forklift shenanigans, you need to have at least one liable party. Somebody, somebody needs so, to be able to know that they're going down. That's forklift. That's just forklift 101. Am I going to get a credit for the... For the for the Dr. Lobo uh, booking, because you know I kind of booked it a long time ago, really. What? Are you asking for something like reparations? Ooh. Well, you... if I could maybe have one of those cool gold-backed stickers that you've got for sale at Slack Pack. Oh my God! Don't uh, I'm blinded by their lumosity. And the beautifulness of them all. Maybe I could get one of those for having booked the great and famous Dr. Lobo over two years ago. Yeah. And which part? Uh, which which?
which episode over the past two years do you think would have been the most exciting to have had him on as a guest? Well, the one that he wasn't on. But what was what? What is your favorite episode of time for the show? Because I've gotten several. Because I've i asked. You can't before, say all of them either. Yeah, because there are the, there are the fans. The fans actually do have favorites, and they like certain like episodes the best for certain reasons. Uh, the best one. The best one is the uh, compilation one that you made. I mean, I think hands down, nah, that was a work of art. Oh, the greatest yeah. hits, of yeah. course. It's, it's, that's like saying all yeah, of them. But no. Yeah, that's like saying all of them. No, it's, but I'm gonna, I was, you know, I was, if you'd let me expound upon my I premise, won't. I would expound I, I further. Won't because, okay. because it's not, because it's not holding water. This thing is like, you know what I saw the other day, Peace, that really ground Even a ears. leaky boat takes a while I to saw sink. A, I saw a television commercial while I was at, uh, at like a bar type situation, and it was for women's hygiene products. And, you know, for years, any time that I had seen like a live, real-time demonstration of the absorbency of women's hygiene products, they would use this blue liquid. But in this one, yep. they didn't use blue liquid. They used this muddy, brownish, red uh, liquid. They did they not. They completely did. serious. And they poured it on to I the women's hygiene the products. But it spun them around in 3D to show you just how much it would absorb. What about the children? The children weren't at the bar. What's going to happen to the surplus stuff that's in the barber's thing that he keeps the combs in? Because that's what they used to pour on those women in feminine hygiene products to show you their absorbency. <laughs> that's going to devastate. That's going to devastate that business. They, you mean when they start dipping all of their combs in menstrual blood? <laughs> no, it's, no, I'm saying that that was a big sideline for that company. They sold the blue liquid to keep the combs clean at the barber shop. And they had a sideline of selling like extra blue liquid to the feminine hygiene testing product companies. And and if they if they're going to a more natural, uh, maybe I should say it in French, ah natural uh, method of dis of showing the displacement of the woman's feminine hygiene product to the bloody mucousy mass that is their menstrual flow. That that's going to be a big hit on that company that won't have anywhere to sell their excess uh, blue barber liquid uh, to show the absorbency. So I'm I'm concerned for that industry. I hope that they've got another revenue stream. That's a good flip piece. Good flip. Did we have another letter? Yes. Oh, yes. One more letter. Got another one here. Yeah, that was. I, uh, really went on a tangent for that one. Yeah, we, we went pretty far. So that was right. a good one. Uh, anyway, dear show, what are the best animals to keep for milk? Mm. Uh, Rats. Ones, ones with transparent or whitish fluids. <laughs> it's a callback. Yeah, well, hey, it's true. <laughs> you ever milk it? No, you ever I'm milk not it? Not? That's how you get duck sauce. <laughs> squeeze them. You gotta juice them. Easy oh, so a duck. funny joke! Duck a... Duck a fox make funny joke about duck! Ooh. Is that a... What did we say about his cell phone number? Oh, if he swears, right? Yeah. That's okay. That was, that was just that was just, what was what was okay about it. That was okay. That was just like I was a able, dog I was with able less. to talk about women's natural flows and try to and I so was, was able I. to keep it classy. So was I. I talked and about I was it. able to keep it classy. And you took it What's classier than you this narrow blue suit that barbers use to keep their combs clean? It's What's classier than that, dude? Well, well, well it's not as classy as that. As that. Well, a Chinese accent is just not classy at all. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on there, Skippy. 
Well, when a white man does it. I think you should be assuming my accent. My, you're assuming that that was a Chinese accent. That yeah. could have been a retard. Like it. it could have been some kind of Slavic guy that See, you feel, in I, I, I know that you could have been a you white guy China that grew up in San Francisco. So you know a Chinese accent, my accent just sounds incredibly my problematic accent. and racist. Now, what do you feel about uh, that? Huh? I feel that you're being I'm talking judgment. about a studio on the radio, and you're and you're so a lot a of community. Things. So are are these the are are these the kind of bits that we're gonna do when we have like the only? No, I'm getting out. Of, I'm getting, you're trying to I'm get getting a, out of my system. You're, you're trying. You're I'm trying to get it out. You're trying to shake it out. Because that's what yeah. this show is. In episode 151, so the Great Wake Up. <laughs> Where it's like we now, now this we're already we're already suffering because we're on YouTube, you know, and and we won we won you know our appeal because of what you said about COVID nineteen piece, mm. yeah. and so you know our channel almost got a strike because you told everybody that you were going to kill them. <laughs> And now, and now we're, we're... I don't think I... I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's what you said. We could go back to that episode, but I remember, didn't they delete it? I had to re-upload it, so I'll have to find it. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to dig it up. It's a, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it'd be pretty easy to find that episode where P said if you get a vaccination that you're probably going to get cancer. And that you're going to uh, you're you're going you're going to melt something like that like your face is going to melt off like said a Nazi. It in a joking way it was jocular said it in a joking it was way we didn't tell people back then that we were joking mm. you would this think well, now, now we know category comedy <laughs> this is what we it get. would be a joke we don't need but, yeah who needs to get back to comedy so but, we're gonna yeah. Yeah, the... Speaking of, I've got one more... So when, when are we oh, doing the Dr. One... Lobo show? Well, with that attitude, maybe we won't find out. Okay. Why? Do you want to do the Dr. Lobo show? Well, I thought, I thought we are a team. Yeah, I mean, I'm letting you know that there's this guy that if we were to do well right. with... It's obvious that like we could get picked up and move on to something that generates a bigger audience and stuff like that. But a lot of these people out there, these people peas, they're called viewers. A lot of them have discerning taste and a lot of them love to hate everything that, you know, you will That's ever sad. do. You know? Well. But we keep you around, peas. But I can't do time for the show without peas. No. Who wants an hour each week of just Dr. Fox sitting here looking at, you know, the wall and talking to himself? You are very handsome. Okay. All right, I'll do better. Let's do the next one. I'll we do got better. one more This letter? time for yeah, sure. No one racism. One last letter. No racism this time. All right. We'll see how well you do. I'm crossing my fingers. <laughs> Dear show. Why is dwarf toss? Let me try that again. Why is dwarf tossing illegal in some places? Now this doesn't seem fair to peas. <laughs> Let's see how well you are. They just said don't be racist. They said nothing about the little people. Yeah, peas. <laughs> the dwarves are one of the main races you can choose in D and D. How can you That's say they're different. not a race? That's different. That's make believe because races don't so exist. The in reason, D &D. yeah, I'll snap you. Yeah, I'll snap you. My headspace, buddy. The, that was actually good. The reason, the reason it's illegal in some states, and it really should be illegal in all states, is that little people, as they prefer to be called, and especially hey, little people that suffer from the Americans, disease of, buddy. <laughs> Uh, they like they like they like to be called little people. Ask a couple, and um, dwarfism, which is the manifestation of of uh, the reason that they they are so small, causes them to have some particularly uh, difficult issues with fractures and uh, breaking their neck. So when you toss a dwarf, 
you have a really good chance of killing him or paralyzing him if he hits his head wrong or um, he, uh, he doesn't hit the wall right. Now, it's strange enough that, that dwarf or midget wrestling, as they called it, midget's derogatory term, uh, they would prefer to be called little people wrestling now, but people don't understand how dangerous it was for those people to do that kind of wrestling because they much more so than a regular or a uh, non uh, little person to do some of those those feats really took uh, their life in their own hands and the untold secret of wrestling is that many of those performers died or were injured never compensated because as you know all wrestlers are independent contractors they're not really employees of the guild or the federation that they work for and so it's a tragedy that these great athletes were hurt and these laws are in a sense to protect people that suffer from dwarfism from being put in a financial situation where they would be forced for monetary reasons to uh, perhaps get injured by letting drunk people throw them at a wall. I was going to say, uh, it sounds like a couple of states. Sorry, he kind of lost me there on the whole, like, little yeah, people please. thing, uh, man. I, I fucking I was, fell asleep, uh, you man. Had, uh, you, man. Had, you had more positive things to say about diminutive Americans than you've had to say of any of uh, thing about a person of color for at least an entire show now. Come on. <laughs> Congratulations, Steve. Congratulations. We're starting to get woke. I think it's terrible. I think it's terrible. Just a little bit. I think it's terrible that you would assume that everyone, that there are no people of color that suffer from dwarfism. Oh, I'm sure there oh, are. Conversation flip was. It back on. So wasn't wasn't I in a sense? Uh, I am being quite generous to all the peoples of the world, of whom I love, regardless of the hue of their skin. How much you love them? Do you love them a long time? Yeah, if they get paid right, sure. What's the next part of the show, peas? It's where we like. We do band name, and then we all go smoke a cigarette and listen to some awesome kick-ass music, and then we come back and tell people what the band name. All right, yeah. It's my favorite part of the show. Best band name. This week's band name is Black T-shirts. Well, uh, it's Black T-shirts is Black T-shirts band. Yes or no? We'll find out when we come back. Okay. We get over to After Six on the Coffee Tron. That's the time for the show. We'll be right back. I have just left the Frop Enclave. I'm seeing all the equipment for Milnar and other bands down in this basement, and I am now on my way upstairs. I'm not! Fuck you! L. Ron Hubbard came to me all sweaty and pissed, wanting to know how badly he's missed. I laughed and dropped by today and gave him a wink. He's to blame for fucking your game, Ronnie. That turn the page here, so I'm rubbish. Sure, you got David and that boy toy cruise, but for the most part, the con sees true your old blues. Not to mention, we really underbid you on the body. He glared at me through one future blood filled, oozing black shit I can only imagine was his soul. His other eye was clear and blue, but both were filled with the fear. Through the noxious pink stink odor that filled my third nostril, I listened to his woes. Some bastard named Ivan Sane, he for sure would hang. Some poor red named Connie, Johnny Carson, and some cat named Richard Dawson. Then out of nowhere, I smell it. The pipe. His pipe. Bob's pipe. I feel piss trickling down my leg. First it's hot and nice. Turning quickly cold and frightening. 
I know it's him. Bob! Oh, okay. Quickies lightning and whistles. And Elrond comes running all the while, whining and whimpering and shaking his ass. And from the depths behind the smoke, I hear him whisper. It's hard to keep good drummers, and they were gone. This is the gospel, please. Praise Bob! Bob, 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 bitches! T-shirts. There's no witty wordplay there. It's just. I don't know. I could see a really good uh, do couple they, of good T-shirt designs. Do they all just wear black T-shirts? That's kind of boring. Could be some chicks in black T-shirts. I'd watch that. I'd watch it. Well. I guess we're gonna find out. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the search, and all I'm finding out if I put in the search, I go black T-shirts, the band. All I get is like a thousand hits for black band, you know, t-shirts, band t-shirts that are in black t-shirts. So I'm not finding any bands. I'm gonna say it's not a band. Not a band. No, not a band. I we'll agree. It is to, not uh, a band. And Astro Six is going to agree with that. So uh, there we go. Got a got a good side project for X Day. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, we're up to about 40 attendees at X Day. So if you want to be attendee. Uh, you know, play your cards right, and RSVP to come to X Day now. Uh, we've got about 10 more slots left, so make sure to RSVP at Dr. Fox, D O K T O R F A U X, at gmail.com. Uh, there's also Fox at hypercubego.com. Just send it to my Gmail, because that's, that's where I'm going to get it. 
let me know that you're coming. Uh, Reverend Dapper's coming. Wild Bill's coming. Who else is coming? Uh, Hazel of the Windmills says, right. you know, she's thinking about it. I'm like, well, you know, you should totally come out so I can sign that certificate that I totally mailed to you and didn't sign. That's a good reason to Elvis come. Elvis Martini's coming. Elvis Martini. Caller 23 is going to be there. He's going. I thought he wasn't going Oh, look to be right there. there. He actually said, yeah, Caller 23 here. I'm going to be at X Day. Oh. Fantastic. That's a, that's a, that's a, yeah, that's an air horn for Caller right there. So, yeah, it's it's turning out to be uh, quite the ordeal. So, um, it's only going to be, it's only going to be three days. How's he going to say hello? <laughs> That's funny, Fees. That's funny. You're a funny guy. I don't get some, too. I don't What's get What's the it. next part of the show, Fees? Oh, man. I hope it's not too bad. Fees? Next part of the show. No. We did a bunch of stuff already. Uh, do you not? Do you not have a witty story tonight? I'm just gonna just do a little. Well, I yeah. I've got one piece. Maybe maybe I'll. You do should tell one. Who is story? You tell your witty story. All right. All right. I'm gonna be Argus Fox. That's that's how it should be because I'm the host. Yeah, you're the host, piece. So introduce. So introduce now we're gonna hear. Yeah, there you go. Fox or truth? <laughs> truth or fox? Truth or fox? That's a bad that little better. That's why I'm here. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Okay. That's why you're here. Let me see here. Fox or fiction? Am I late on that one? See now, I'm, now I'm having like what Pease goes through. Where he's like, oh, I don't know if I've already told that one or not. It's like there are times where we we've, we've said <laughs> stuff on the air and totally, totally revealed it. But uh, yeah, but you're, you're you've shared so little of yourself with the listeners and the viewers that I feel like any story you could just grab anything into that cavernous mind of yours, and uh, none of us would have ever heard you before. Well, uh, let's see here. Yeah, let's see. Let's see here. Yeah. So, when I was a wee little Dr. Fox, oh, about first, first, second grade Dr. Fox. Intern Fox. Intern, little, Your intern little intern Fox. Fox. Still learning the ways of the land. Not even, not even a resident yet. Uh, I was absolutely... Uh, in love with every animal in the world, and I, I, I wanted to be friends with the animals. I wanted to drink wine with the animals as a, as a, as a young child, and I wanted to commune with them and sing their songs. Uh, but this was not always the way, and some people would call Dr. Fox, some other, we'll call them miscreants, would call Dr. Fox a softy and a bit of a dandy because he wanted to talk to the animals. And so what happened was outside of the playground, several children uh, started digging up worms. And at first, they were just pulling them out of the ground. Uh, but then they started impaling them with sticks and skewers uh, and crucifying these worms. And they they would they praise would, praise they Jesus. They would go up to the chain link fence. And they would line up their sticks, and they would take the worms, and then they would come up, and they would do firing squads on them. And they would all come, and they would stomp on the worms and smash them, smash them into just pulverized bits of mucus and meat. And so Dr. Fox, little intern Fox, started a campaign 
to save the worms, including making protest signs and picketing, the wanton acts of violence that other children were committing upon nature. And that's why we have global warming. And that's why, yes, and Dr. Fox and little intern Fox was laughed off the picket line and further ridiculed for the rest of his life for being sentimental towards earthworms. And that, worm lover, that is my story. Okay, can I ask my questions? Yes, I get to ask your questions now. Is this why you have a fascination with Doug Tintal? The guy that deep fries everything on the Food Network? No, the guy that created Earthworm Jim. Uh, I would say no. I, I think uh, I think I found something else about his work later that would uh, be invigorating. But then I found that he's actually just a he's actually just a giant bully. Now, now, Fox, okay. does does this have to do with the uh, cancellation of Earthworm Jim? I I think that's what is that what sparked it all? Asking. Yeah, uh, ask, sorry, I'm ask kind of young. Answer, I don't know senator. these things. Ask an answered price. senator. Sorry. Ask an answered senator. I like beer. I was the first one Fox. to like beer. Well. I guess, this, I guess, I guess, this, uh... This was a, was this the private school? Yeah, was it the private school that you yeah, went to? Yeah. So if they I were was, okay with you killing tiny things, or uh, other kids killing tiny things, I should say. It's, uh... Not yeah, worth yeah, so yeah, much for pro-life, huh? They were, were they, complacent in it. Were they actual, were they actual crosses, or just cross-like? Uh... They... I, I guess you could say they were cross-like. Okay. Something to I'm going to say that this, this story is... I, I know he loves animals. I want to say he would do that. I, I feel there was a lot of reasons for you to do it, but the whole Earthworm Jim thing makes me think that that's how you pulled this story together, just, mm -hmm. just that commonality of it, and you mentioned Earthworms. I'm going to say it's a lie based on that connection. However, I totally would believe that you would do something like that because you have the soul and heart of an angel. But you don't believe I did that? Or, no, I think that this is a tale you told to fool your pal, the Pete. All right. I, I, I believe you, Fox. I mean, you, you, you have that, uh, what do they call it, that liberal... Uh, Douchebagginess. Yeah, yeah, the the uh, the douchery of uh, loving and uh, a worm, and yeah, so much to so as to do uh, what? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Protest. No, I, I think I, of if it's killing true, of worms. If it's true, you're missing the point. If it is a true story, you're missing the point. It wasn't any of those things that caused Doctor Fox to speak out. Doctor Fox, unadmittedly. He would never admit this to anyone. Has a deep sense of what is right in the world and what is just in the world. Yes, and many times world when world. he sees those things taking place, he he speaks up. He has protested and done other things. You know what? I wish I could change my answer and say that yes, yes, this did happen because I feel like if it didn't happen, which I said it didn't, it should have happened because that's the Dr. Fox I know. Protector of the worms. The guy that says, hey, it doesn't matter that they're worms. You guys are being assholes for stomping on the worms and poking them with sticks. They're not hey, doing Dr. anything Fox. to you. Now, Dr. Fox probably would not have protested if those kids had dug up their worms and gone fishing with them. Because then there would have been a reason to their insanity. They would have been efficient. And no, I think they're, worms to hook up fish to really take home. But there was question. no logic behind it. Do, would you kill a worm? actually please? stop them later. I, 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 yes, I have killed a worm. 
I think that's why he's saying it's a lie. Out of your own guilt. Yeah. He wants to make no, up for no, like the, it, the massacre, the genocide he's done to well, uh, the the worm. What's the race. answer, Doctor Fox? This week's answer is <laughs> that this story that I told is in its entirety absolutely true. <laughs> Take that, Talk to you. Not only do I quote the seventy songs that said save the worm. Into my desk at school. And, uh, oh my How many uh, friends did no, you lose? Uh, uh, several. Several. Yeah, that I would many. I huh? two or three Damn. people uh, totally were like just appalled by my behavior. Wow. Was, uh, did not, did the other children, children get kill the worms? I don't think so. Were the other children pulled aside and said, hey, don't kill worms? Maybe. I'm not sure. Nobody told me anything on my regard. I feel like they should have. Well, it brings us to uh, what's the next part of the show, Peeves? Well, it's time to apologize, almost. Almost, but we got a couple of minutes. Maybe we should do the maybe we should do the headlines. We do the proving grounds piece. Oh, let's do the headlines. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Idea. Master Six, read out the headlines. Best part of the show. Say please. Best part of the show. Ask your six, please. All right, yeah. Um, tonight we've got. Uh, oh, here's a fun one. Stevie Wonder moves back to is moving to Ghana. <laughs> I was gonna say the moves back. <laughs> yeah. You you kind of stepped on it. No, I think I I think yeah that, that would work. work. Ask your six. That would work. After six, we said no more racism. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, that's what only it? to you. We Ghana? have a big guest coming yeah, on, Ghana. and you yeah, can't I barely play in high jinks. Well, I'll shout louder then. Please do. All right. Okay. Uh, Canada U.S. borders close until further notice. Tim Hortons destitute. Our <laughs> Bagged milk industry in in turmoil. <laughs> we'll go with that one. I'll give you a, yeah, bag milk piece. Yeah, yeah. Wisconsinites what what? extremely confused. <laughs> uh, stocks in maple baked beans skyrocket. <laughs> Next to, I made some baked beans yesterday. I like them with toast. Beans and toast. All right, uh, Thailand it's, is pushing it's more to make difficult Canada's uh, its on. next cash crop. One more time, please. Thailand is pushing to make cannabis their next cash crop. Uh, hemp thongs stocks rapidly increase. <laughs> I guess that. I mean both kinds of thongs. I guess the ladyboy market isn't doing too well. I get. Yeah, I guess it's getting smoked out. <laughs> Smart investors going big in bamboo twine. <laughs> um. Japan has made a minister of loneliness. Uh, Japan releases new goth album weekly. <laughs> <laughs> Japan gets even more lonely. Man, nah, that, that was terrible. Uh, yeah, Apex Twin to play next week. <laughs> Suicide Forest becomes Suicide City. Now, now filming a remake of Das Boot. Okay, yeah. Next headline. Uh, trophy Hunter poses with Valentine's animal heart. Trophy Hunter poses with Valentine's animal heart. 
Toys R Us threatens Roth lawsuit. Jeffrey's death will not go unavenged. Oh! Fantastic, Pete. Who was a giraffe? Very good, Pete. You know, it gets a little of this. But that's it. Alright, uh, last one. Yeah, last one. Yeah, I last one. Okay, uh, uh, radiated fish still found around Fukushima. Say again? Radioactive fish still found around Fukushima. Radioactive fish still found. Sushi prices soar. <laughs> <laughs> More meat on them fish. Live action Simpsons movie takes a uh, price cut on CGI budget. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Fox, that's incredible. It's time for my favorite part of the show, Fox. It's time for Fox's Apologies. Oh, man. This is my favorite part of the show. Let's do it. I'd just like to tell everybody that, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't get the t-shirts done on time, and I'm, I'm sorry that we didn't look up the band name before, and I'm, I'm sorry that instead of playing a song break, we played Pease's rant that he wanted me to play this week, and I'm, I'm sorry that Pease is racist and sexist and a bit of a chauvinist and a bit of a just a cruel monster towards anybody that bears any kind of difference towards his person and i'm i'm well, sorry hey 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 these are these, these, are, these, are, these, are, these are my apologies i'd like to say sorry to reverend fanboy reverend fanboy is a nice guy who is super friendly to everybody all the time and has never said anything bad or mean or inflammatory to anybody and that all of the rage and hate that comes from people like peas that should just that should just stop and i apologize for it i apologize for this show that's it that's another episode of time for the show peace tell them where they can find time for the show it's on the internet all right, well, we'll see you next week broadcasting live on freethinkradio.com and youtube.com slash hypercubego. I'm Dr. Fox, Flux Rutenberg on the sticks, Aster Six on the big board, on the hypercom, it was Reverend Peas. Thanks to everybody that joined us in the chat this week. Make sure to sign up and subscribe to patreon.com slash hypercube. Support the show and keep it going. As long as you keep paying me, I'll keep suffering here for you. I'm Dr. Fox. Pete, you got anything else for him? No, nope, you kids have a good week. We miss you. Oh, don't think. Yeah, don't forget. Get your uh, get your Hypercube memberships available exclusively at HypercubeGo.com. It's full of stuff. All this stuff that's just falling out. Get five gold Don't Think stickers. And more cool stuff. All right, it's time for sodas and chili dogs. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Woo!